woman from Australia named Ruth Greenwood. And I have to tell you, Ruth Greenwood is one of the most impressive persons I've ever met. Turns out she is the voting rights director for a committee that I had never heard of called the Chicago Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. And she said, this is a really great lawsuit potential. She said, I will get a law firm to represent you pro bono. So she got the law firm of Meyer Brown, a thousand person law firm in Chicago who decided they would represent us pro bono. And the lawyer that she got to, rep to handle the case is a, name, a woman named Michelle Ordizi, who's the former clerk to the justice, to Justice Stevens on the United States Supreme Court. So we have a former law clerk who's representing us in this case and who is uh, going to do it for free. But then Ruth Greenwood also said, you know, I think I can raise some money for your expert witnesses. And she raised about $150,000 for expert witnesses from various foundations. So we're feeling pretty good about our chances of winning this lawsuit that uh, we're bringing in the Western District of Wisconsin. The lawsuit was filed a couple of months ago, and uh, uh, the, Republic, the uh, Attorney General's Office responded. And today, or on Monday, we filed our brief. And uh, we're ready to go before a three-judge panel that consists of a judge from the Eastern District of Wisconsin, retired circuit court judge from Indiana, and uh, uh, the judge from the Western District uh, uh, where we filed the uh, lawsuit. We think we have a pretty good chance of winning, both on the district court or on the three-judge panel. And, and when you file a three-judge, when you bring a case involving a constitutional challenge to a state constitution. Uh, you can, uh, this is, uh, they automatically set up a three judge panel and any appeal is directly to the United States Supreme Court. So this is not gonna be taking a couple of years the way most lawsuits do. If uh, they, uh, if we win or even if we lose, this will be appealed to the United States Supreme Court and it will be appealed relatively quickly. And so therefore, we are somewhat optimistic. We don't know if we can get it, the lawsuit in time for the next election. And we also know that under the law, they have to give the legislature a chance to remedy that. So if they say, okay, this is among the worst decisions, <laughs> then uh, worst reportion that they have an opportunity to run that. But, but I truly don't believe that Robin Voss is capable of throwing 15 Republican legislators under the wheels of the bus in order to have the legislature make a correction. So I think what would happen is we will see the potential of a court-drawn plan, which probably will be fair. Now, meanwhile, we got our expert witnesses. And the expert witnesses analyzed 800 redistricting plans, all 800, that were drawn by various legislatures since 1972. They ranked Wisconsin, the current Wisconsin district, and the bottom 28 of those plans as the most partisan redistricting. So we feel pretty good that we have a chance with our experts to convince the court that we will change this law. Now I have to tell you, redistricting is a very, very complicated uh, problem. And Jay and I actually are gonna disagree a little bit on the question of do we want a, uh, a situation where a independent commission or a uh, agency uh, draws the plan. Uh, and I always have been very fearful that when those independent commissions are created, they're eventually taken over by one of the parties or the other. And it doesn't stay independent for very long. I think what you need and what we, this lawsuit will bring is a standard which is definable 
which a legislature can look at, which a court can look at, or for that matter, which an independent commission must look at, which defines what is partisan and what is not partisan. And so therefore, without the standard, I don't think we can ever really effectively reform redistricting. And Jay and I are going to disagree on that. Uh, but that was the, the, the thing that I had. One of the things that happens that makes the standard somewhat difficult is that when one looks at the political geography of Wisconsin, you'll see that you know the Wow counties, Waukesha, Ozaki, and Washington County vote 70, 72 percent at the highest for Republicans. Even in Oconomowoc, you're going to get 35 percent of the people voting Democratic, even in a bad year. And in Brookfield or Elm Grove, you may get 25 percent uh, voting Democratic. But when you go into the city of, or, uh, city of Milwaukee, in the inner city, or you go into the isthmus in Madison, you see 5% voting Republican. There was one precinct in the state where uh, Mitt Romney got one vote, and 970 <laughs> people voted Democratic. It was an all black district in the Senate of Warren. And they tracked him down and he's now. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think he, was, he was shipped out to <laughs> Something. But what happens is the political geography. Uh, tends to concentrate Democratic votes in narrow areas, and Republican votes are much more spread out in the Republican types of counties and areas where there's a Republican majority. And what that does is if you had a blind redistricting, you, and, and I've checked this out on all the court redistrictings we have, there's always going to be a bias very slight bias. Even the fairest redistricting is going to always have a slight two or three four seat edge for the Republicans. I looked at all our Wisconsin uh, redistricting that came out under uh, the various courts, and it usually says 47 seats lead Democratic, 52 seats lead Republican. It doesn't do every election, but if you go 50 50, if it's in one of those 50 50 elections, that's how the result is going to be. And so therefore, without a standard that said 50% of the seats ought to be one party, 50% of the seats ought to be the other party, and 20% ought to be competitive. Because what we see it happen is nothing but safe seats done. I have a safe seat. I don't have to worry about the Republicans. They don't even run anybody against me for the last several elections. I look. Even the special election out here in Delafield uh, for the Senate, there wasn't a Democratic candidate run. Because we know that's an overwhelming Republican seat. And nobody's going to waste their money and effort to try to win in a seat like that. So what you see is that this situation where elected officials only are accountable to people who are their own party and philosophy. And that moves both parties to their extremes. And it basically says the willingness to compromise in order to win an election is diminished considerably. And I don't think that's good for Wisconsin. I think we are far better off if we have competitive seats where people have to reach across the aisle to win an election and not just worry about the hardcore party members uh, from their side. Now, I wish, I didn't have to say that, I wish we had a majority of solid liberal Democrats, and I usually fight for that. But I also know, for the sake of good democracy, we need to do that. So we have this lawsuit that's going to set that standard. I think we are going to be very successful, because I think the evidence supports us. The case law supports us, I believe. The case law would be the Bandemer case, the Veed case, a whole series of cases, the Lulac case, all of which took place in the last few years that said that we are coming to a point where democracy is being challenged 
And some of the people on the Supreme Court are starting to go there. You know, there was a really major case that occurred not very long ago. And that was a case that we heard actually about six months ago, involving Arizona and the special condition that set up uh, the redistricting law in the state of Arizona. The US Constitution says the state legislatures should draw the congressional district. And the Republicans in Arizona said, a commission drew out of legislative districts, that's illegal under the US Constitution. And they challenged the decision by the voters who, who, who had created this commission by referendum, they challenged the decision to uh, basically transfer the power to redistricting uh, to a commission. The US Supreme Court, by a five to four, by a five to four vote, with Justice Kennedy voting in the majority, said nope. That was constitutional because the people spoke through their, as acted as their own legislature and adopted this commission and therefore the validity of the commission was sustained. I was stunned because of the clear reading of the constitutional language. But that tells me that people like Justice Kennedy are looking at the whole question of is democracy being threatened by excessive partisan redistricting, which certainly occurred in a greater uh, amount in this last redistricting cycle all across the country than it ever occurred before. States that were won by Democratic candidates for president, like North Carolina, with 12 seats or 13 seats in the Congress, only has four Democrats, and the remaining nine are Republicans. Ohio with 18 seats has five Democrats and the rest are Republicans. They redistricted so thoroughly that the inability for the, Repub for the Democrats to ever get a majority back in the US Congress is seriously placed in jeopardy. And for that reason, I think we brought this suit. I think we're optimistic that we're gonna win this suit. And uh, uh, I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to talk to you about this suit. I'm going to let Jay talk a little bit about the subject that I disagree with. <laughs>